Hi, I'm Ross Anderson. I'm Professor of Security Engineering at Edinburgh and also at Cambridge. And I'm Sam Ainsworth, a lecturer in Systems and Hardware Security at Edinburgh. And this is a brief trailer for our new course on Security Engineering. What we're trying to do here is give you a systems level view into how real world systems interpreted very broadly get attacked and how we can design to try and mitigate any damage. Okay, so Sam, what do you think was the most important system disaster that happened over the last year or two? Well, one of the most high profile is the Boeing 737 MAX disaster where because of a failure of a sensor and the not so fail safe infrastructure and governance around it there were 346 deaths and perhaps 80 billion dollars of collateral damage that's more of a safety issue though really safety and security are the same thing security just has a motivated attacker what do you think more directly on the security side well, the security incident that's most disrupted the IT world recently has been the Solar Winds hack. Um, there, the Russians hacked into Solar Winds, a company which sells software that many firms and government organizations use to manage the performance of the database systems, particularly in big Windows installations. And so the Russians, having um, infiltrated SolarWinds, sent out a software update that left behind malware in over 18,000 government departments and companies worldwide. Now, that was an eye opener, not just because of the scale of the attack, but because of the really smart way they picked their target. SolarWinds 10 years ago was a great tech company, but then it got bought by a bank, which also bought its competitors, so they had a comfortable little monopoly. They raked in the money, and then they cut their costs by sacking many of their engineering staff, and they had the maintenance done low cost in Eastern Europe. Um, so even when they were warned about security, they just didn't have an incentive to do anything about it. And that left their customers exposed. So what do you have to say to our students? Perhaps they're wanting to become software engineers. Can't they just view security engineering as someone else's problem? Just like SolarWinds did, which was totally rational from a shareholder's point of view. Well, this is an important point that security systems often fail because the incentives aren't properly aligned. If Alice is guarding a system while Bob pays the cost of failure, then you can expect trouble. Um, we've seen this again and again. Uh, for example, if you want to stop fraud against payment cards, then it's the merchants uh, and the banks uh, which buy transactions from them which have to take care. Uh, but the costs of fraud fall on the cardholders and on the banks that issued cards to them. And as these are usually the different banks, and nobody's motivated to make a serious enough effort to protect their system. And that's one of the reasons why we've got a pervasive background cost of payment card fraud of 0.2, 0.3% or so of turnover. So then, what we have for you is a course that's specifically designed to allow you to reason through security threats and defences in the complex real world. We'll consider the low-level security implementation details, but also the wider context of how ecosystems are built on top of that. We'll look at the networks, hardware and operating system security mechanisms, but no product exists in isolation. 20 years ago, operating system security was all about antivirus software. That got better when we moved from laptops to phones, as the access controls in phones are better at stopping one app from getting into another app's data. But another factor is the ecosystem. App stores act as gateways to try to stop malware getting in in the first place, and also to extract rent from the app vendors. So the app stores have an incentive to get to know the vendors, and watch what their software does. Your privacy gets entangled with the ad ecosystem. We live in a world where Apple will give you more privacy in order to take ad revenue away from Facebook. We'll also look at what happens when we start putting software into devices such as cars and medical implants on which we actually depend for our lives. Uh, because safety and security become inextricably intertwined in all sorts of complex ways. And that's happening more and more as we get software in all sorts of devices in the real world around us. Now, 
this leads to really significant issues around maintenance. Because if you go back five or 10 years, there are basically two types of security system that we knew how to build. Um, we could build things like phones, which are secure because you patch them every month, but patching stops after three years or with an iPhone, maybe five years, because the vendors want to push you into buying a new phone. Um, on the other hand, there's things like cars where we test the software in them to death before we sell them, but then we didn't use to connect them to the internet and never patch them so that it was okay if a car was running around for 20 years with the same software in it. But what happens now that we're connecting cars to the internet? Well, all of a sudden it means that if somebody discovers an exploitable security vulnerability, it could be exploited remotely at scale and could perhaps be used to crash millions of cars. And so you absolutely have to uh, patch cars for their useful lifetime, and this created a big problem. Uh, the car companies wanted to stop patching after six years, but that would be an environmental disaster, right? Because if you throw away cars after half of their previous lifetime, then all the embedded carbon cost in the car is wasted. And so the European Union made a law requiring the car makers to patch cars for at least 10 years after the last car leaves the showroom. And this in turn means that there's a huge big challenge facing our software engineers. How do we go about designing tools to write software that we may have to maintain for at least 20 years? So then, wherever you are in tech, whatever job you have, it's increasingly becoming inevitable that you're going to have to consider security from a full stack perspective. You're going to need to understand the incentives as well as all of the inner details of access control or transistors. And that is what we're going to provide you with in our brand new course on security engineering. The course is based on my security engineering textbook, um, which pioneered this approach 20 years ago. And last year I spent lockdown producing a third edition, which brings us up to speed uh, with um, mobile phones, app stores, clouds, and all the latest attacks. Now, there are some sample chapters available on my website, but the whole book is available from the university library through the usual mechanisms. Including via the university's digital library, if you'd like to take a look before you start the course.